Buongiorno everyone, how are you today? I'm Alessandro Boga, the Italian specialist at Wilson Daniels. After the successful conversation we had with Federica Mascheroni-Stianti of Castello di Volpaia last week, here we are back again live, this time with Gianluca Bisol, the 21st generation of his family winery that makes wine in Val do Bianene since 1542. In a few moments, I'll connect to Gianluca, who is currently in Val do Biadene, where he lives, the historical area of production of Prosecco, in home of the steepest and highest quality Prosecco vineyards. Gianluca will be live from Cartisse, the famed Grand Cru of Val do Biadene, and will discuss why Prosecco Superiore made on this hill is so special. This will be a full diving chat on Prosecco Superiore and what makes it so different compared to the large DOC area. Now, let's connect to Gianluca and feel free to type your own questions while we talk. Okay, let me add. Hi, ciao, Gianluca. Ciao, ciao, how are you? Hi, how are you? Very good, very good. I'm in the best place in my region. I'm in the top of the hill of Cartizze, you know. As you can oh, see, yeah. here is I've incredible. Been, yeah, the view. Yeah. No, yeah, I've been with you many times and I, I, I can tell you how much I would love to be with you right now. Instead yes, here, so you, have to, you have to go. Everybody have to go to here to see where the Prosecco give the best expression because, you know, it's a very sensible kind of grape. Yeah, for sure. We'll dive into Cartis uh, during our conversation, for sure. Uh, but uh, we know we saw uh, from last week with the, the chat with um, Federico Volpaio, we saw that the work in the vineyard keeps going in Piazza Classico, even in a paralyzed country such as Italy is right now. I guess the same is in Valdo Viadere, correct? Yes, as you can see, we are, we are at the beginning of the season. Uh, the temperature is perfect today. And uh, as you can see here, the, the vineyard are preparing no? the new, the new, this, yeah, this, this, this will be the, the, the life of the, 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 the next harvest. So yeah, as you can break. see, it's so beautiful here. And uh, you have uh, like uh, lacy uh, in, in the, the lacy in, in, in the vineyard. Here yeah, you can fantastic. see we have we have a different age of vines like this that is around 60 years old and also a new one very near because uh, we have a very sartorial uh, cultivation in, in the vineyard because uh, is uh, the beautiful of Valdobiadene uh, due to the very uh, the steepness uh, of the vineyard is that uh, every time that the vine died, we change the single vine. We didn't change all the vineyard like in the, in the flat area where you can see very regular and very uh, industrial vineyard. Here is everything by hand and we change the, the, the vines every year where they need. So here, for example, you have a vine of uh, around uh, seven years. This is around uh, uh, 15 years. This is uh, uh, older. This is about uh, 20, 25. So in this uh, place you can find a different uh, age and this is uh, the characteristic of the area of uh, Valdobbiadene, Conegliano, where everything is in the hills. So you can't go in each line with the, the machine. So you do everything by hand. Oh, for sure. And that's what makes uh, Baldo Bialini so different. So let's uh, back up a little and let's talk about the history of Prosecco, which is, starts from Baldo Bialini. Yes. So, uh, Prosecco, you know, is, uh, come from an autochton vine. The name of the autochton vine is Glera. And uh, born bring the best expression in this area of Valdobbiadene since uh, 600 years ago, minimum. And my family uh, is a family of vine growers 
that uh, start uh, to work uh, recently, only in the 1542. <laughs> so <laughs> less than 500 years. Yeah. And uh, generation by generation, we had uh, the opportunity to buy a piece of land. Every generation buy a piece. I'm the 21 generation. So now we have 20 plots of vineyard in different hills of Valdobbiadene and Conegliano and nothing in the flat area of the Veneto. From here, you can see the flat area of the Veneto. Wow. In, in far, you can see it's totally different because uh, you don't have uh, this kind of soil. You don't have this excursion of temperature. And if you look uh, in front, uh, you can see that uh, at the end, you didn't see nothing because at the end, there is the sea. It's yeah. around, it's around uh, 40 miles uh, from here the sea, the Venice is 40 miles from here. And uh, in the back, uh, we have the mountain. And back the mountain, there are the Dolomites, Dolomites. at uh, around 40 miles. So we are in the middle from uh, the sea and, uh, and the Dolomites. So this is also the reason why the Prosecco that grown in Val Biadene is called Prosecco Superiore, because it is uh, the better position for a Prosecco. And so the quality is totally different. And uh, the quantity is also a lot less than in the flat area of the Veneto. So yeah. you can find in the market different Prosecco. And uh, we produce uh, Prosecco Superiore since 1542. And uh, we have also in the margin area of uh, the hills, uh, a little part of Prosecco DOC with Jayo, so we, yeah, we have yeah. also this, uh, this one, but with uh, high quality because it's always from the hills. So we can say, we can say that uh, in Val d'Ubianene, it's such a type of uh, heroic viticulture, correct? Because exactly, exactly. Hills. If, if you have a vineyard of Prosecco in the flat area, uh, flat area of Veneto and Friuli, you need uh, with the machine around 85, 90 hours per hectare of, uh, of work. Uh, if you have uh, the vineyard here in the hills, uh, you need uh, 800, 900, uh, 1000 hours per hectare of end work. You can't go in every vineyard with the machine. So this is a lot of work, but at the end, the quality is totally different. Also, uh, the, the time in which we harvest is different. It's around uh, 25 days after here that yeah. in the flat area. Sure, it takes more time to ripe the grapes. So it's about exactly. 10 times more expensive to produce wine in Valdobbiano versus the DOC area around. Exactly, exactly. And in terms of production, is one fifth, correct? Uh, one? One fifth. What? Uh, in general, you mean uh, in like number the of. Uh, the DOCG, DOCG versus DOC. Or yes, it's one, one six, one six, one six so. because uh, yeah. every six bottle of uh, Prosecco in the market, there are only uh, uh, one bottle that is from the Prosecco Superiore, the historical area, and five bottles come from the flat area where uh, there is more, more e is, is more easy to, to grow the vines and also the price is more competitive, but the quality is different. <laughs> right, and also let's remember that uh, the uh, the OCG, um, like what we call now the OCG Valdo Biadene, it goes yes. back to the late um, 19th century, so the 1800s, versus exactly. the DOC exactly. uh, area from the late 2000s. So, exactly, yeah. exactly, it's a very long tradition, but the rules uh, start in uh, 1969, yeah, with Valdo Biadene and Conegliano and Aslo. Right. And uh, and now from uh, since uh, 2009 we have also the rules for the flat area that before was without uh, many rules and right. this is called Prosecco DOC. Correct. So Prosecco DOC, Prosecco Superiore DOCG, and and where we are now Cartizze, that is the best uh, the best part of the area. Yeah. Only so one bottle every 600 bottle of Prosecco is Cartizze. Only one every 600. Wow. Wow, that's fantastic. So, Cartista, I heard, is one of the most expensive sparkling wine in the world, right? It's uh, the most expensive land 
or, or vineyard yeah, the land, for, of course. for, yeah. for uh, produce grape uh, that is uh, dedicated to sparkling wine in the world, more than champagne. Because here uh, in Cartizze, the total extension of this hill that you can see, you can see down because it's very steep, but I, I move uh, to show you where it's uh, so steep. And here is in, in general, in total is uh, 106 hectares. That means more or less uh, 250 acres. And uh, is nothing no? because it's uh, owned by 140 families. And uh, the major part of these families sell the grape uh, to the, the cooperative or to the wineries. There are 95% of the wineries that uh, only buy uh, juice or, or, or a little part grape. Uh, only 5% are wine, wineries like us that own the vineyard and start from the vineyard, the project of quality. And uh, the cost of this land of Cartice is the most expensive in, in, in the world for sparkling wine because uh, the, the price is around 2.5 million euro per hectare. So it means that every three acres is uh, 2.5 uh, million. So one million per acre, more or less. And, and also, I read that the cost of a DOC uh, actor is around two hundred thousand dollars, and for two hundred thousand euro, sorry, and yes. uh, for the Val do Biadene area is about four hundred to four hundred fifty. Oh, for uh, for DOC, you can find also at one hundred and fifty thousand euro wow. per hectare, so and uh, Val do Biadene is six hundred thousand euro per hectare. Okay, went up. Okay, cool. Look, look yeah. how steep is the area. Yeah, it's amazing. Everything is vertical. Yeah, I know. I, I, I think that several people, when they drink Prosecco, if they're not really part of the industry, they haven't had the chance to visit this area, they don't imagine how Valdo Biadene can be so steep, it can be so beautiful and with a fantastic landscape. Yes, yes. I, I hope uh, that... Uh, the people come to see Valdobiadene. Now you know that since uh, July 2019, this terroir this became uh, heritage of uh, UNESCO. So it means that it is uh, considered one of the most beautiful uh, areas in the, in the world. So uh, for us, it's a good uh, thing because the, the people uh, come and uh, they know how beautiful is the area and how different is the the quality of uh, a Prosecco uh, that grow in the, in the hills. Yeah. Look at the biodiversity here. We have a lot of flower in the vineyard. We dedicate a lot of time for the biodiversity. Beautiful. Um, remind me, Gianluca, so your part of Cartista is also the top of the hill, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, this is the top part of the hill of Cartizze, so uh, this is the best position because we have uh, sun all the day, we have the best wind, we have uh, this best, the best excursion of temperature, and uh, so for us uh, it's very important to take care of this vineyard like a garden, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah, now we are moving the, the, the soil to, to give oxygen to the soil. As you can see, it's a very beautiful kind of sand soil, mm -hmm. very rich. And uh, the vineyard here have the best condition for ground quality. Yeah. Amazing, beautiful. Me? Also, <laughs> even though I shouldn't say that, but uh, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> I think I, you see, I, I I like grow a little bit of a beard, so I'm, I'm still not at the mustache yet. <laughs> um, uh, this, this is the small village of San Pietro that is near Santo Stefano, and uh, after San Pietro there is uh, the Valdo Biadene that is the biggest uh, part of the of the, the area and here we are in the middle from san pietro and santo stefano 
that are considered the, the best uh, village of uh, the Valdobbiadene area. Because as you can see, you have a, a wonderful landscape. But, but the wonderful landscape is not only a question of beautiful, but it's also a question of uh, excursion of temperature. Yeah. Yeah, what, what you said earlier, that uh, the grapes ripen later because of uh, this, uh, this diurnal yes. temperature. Uh, exactly. So exactly. it's important for, for, for a normal grape like Lea. So Exactly. Uh, great. So the Vizol Winery is in a unique position of owning the land in Prosecco Superiore, which is very unique. Yes. Not usual. Let's put it that way. Um, yes. And also, one of the characteristics of what your wines is the fact that every wine is an expression of a specific soil. And exactly. you have like five different type of soils and terroirs. Can you yes. speak a little bit more about that? Yes. Uh, my grandfather, Jayo, the real name was Desiderio, but the nickname was Jayo, decided uh, uh, around 70 years ago to have, uh, uh, to, to separate the grape from uh, the different kind of soil. And uh, the, 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 the kind of soil are five kind of soil. And now we are the only one uh, winery in, in the Prosecco area that have a collection of five different Prosecco Superiore from five different kinds of soil. And uh, we also dedicate, the only one cuvée that we do is dedicated to, to Jayo, my grandfather. And this Jayo, the name of the, this cuvée, that is a cuvée of three kinds of soil. Yes, you have in your hand the small one. And uh, with Jayo, we have the cuvée of three kinds of soil, three hills. One is clay soil, another one is sand soil, and another one is morenic soil. And uh, we have uh, also other vineyards with other kinds of, of, uh, of soil. Uh, one is calcareous soil, and another one is marne, like in Champagne. It's a small part in which we have this uh, Rive di Campea that is uh, from a marne soil. So it's very, very interesting, the, the texture of this wine. But it's interesting to taste that these this five kinds of, of uh, soil with the same grape. And uh, these five kinds of soil are near each other because uh, the maximum distance is uh, eight kilometers. But in soli only eight kilometers, you, you have uh, five kinds of soil, five hills, uh, more than five hills, but five uh, hills we own in, with these five five kinds of soil. So this is uh, amazing. And uh, every time that I taste uh, my Prosecco Superiore with uh, our customer, our friends, uh, I love to show this different. Uh, and uh, I, I open uh, all the five uh, kind of uh, soil, five bottles, and uh, everybody was, is surprised of, of the difference. The same grape, very near each other, the vineyard, but the difference is uh, very, very, very incredible. So an important terroir approach that you're, you're doing at the wine. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. We underline our difference, that is uh, to own the vineyard and to own the soil, and uh, this history that uh, allow us to, to show what uh, can create uh, a particular character to the wine. Yeah. So we do this uh, thanks to the different kind of soil. So the, the, more, the, the number one uh, uh, wine you make is the Crede, which comes from mostly clay soil. Right? Clay soil, exactly. Um, and then you make the Cartizza, which we, we talked about. And I actually have a, a bottle right here with me. It's, yes. an, it's an older vintage. That's why it's the, yes. the older the, label. The old label, yes. But uh, it, there's an, an important and I think unique thing about Cartista that not many people have noticed maybe in the past is the fact that there's no mention of Prosecco in the DOCG of Cartista. Yes. It says Valdopiadena right. Superiore di Cartista. So it's something yes. that goes beyond Prosecco. Exactly. Exactly. It's, uh, it's something that we, we want to underline that is different. It's incredible. Uh, the same grape here is the last grape that we harvest. Uh, if uh, we start to harvest... Uh, uh, for the Prosecco Superiore that is late of Prosecco DOC. We start to harvest Prosecco Superiore at the beginning of uh, September. We 
harvest the we harvest the, the grape of Kartitsa at the end of September, beginning of October. So one month after, in the same area. So this is a incredible. Uh, incredible quality of the soil that give uh, the opportunity to leave uh, the grape more time uh, in the vines to arrive at the perfect maturation. And uh, this bring a lot of, of original flower, more than the other hills, uh, thanks to the longer maturation, thanks to this kind of uh, excursion of temperature kind of soil. Everything is uh, amplified, so we can arrive uh, at this uh, incredible result. And the Cartizze, is like the amplifier of the quality of Prosecco Superiore. And everybody wants a piece of Cartista. Yes. Also, uh, also me, uh, also I, I love uh, Cartista, also like aperitif, for an aperitif. For example, yesterday we had an aperitif before the lunch with Cartista, with a salty, uh, some fried dish. And so is is. A little bit sweeter than the Prosecco, but thanks to the minerality, thanks to the richness, uh, the flavor, you can match perfectly uh, with, uh, with uh, the cartizze and the food at the beginning of the lunch. I remember, I remember four years ago with Oscar Farinetti, the owner of uh, Italy, we was uh, in Venice. You know that in Venice I own an island in which I have a restaurant, a uh, yep. restaurant and a vineyard. It is Venice, Venice, and uh, Oscar is, uh, is falling in love with Venice. And uh, we had a wonderful aperitif in, in the table of different kind of salami, prosciutto, uh, and other things with Cartizze. He, and he say me, this is the best aperitif of my life. No, I, I, I couldn't agree more. And I always <laughs> enjoy our aperitivo at the table where you're at right now every time yes. we can visit you. So Yes, you can see this table is uh, interesting because uh, you have also the, the distance from uh, the big city in the world and also the coordinates south, uh, north, uh, east, uh, yeah. west. Show, show to our followers the, the view that you have right now in front of you. What? Show the, our followers are followers the view that you have in front of you from the, okay. from the table. See, you can see it, here we are in, in, the hill, in the hill of Cartizze, but in front of the hill of Cartizze there are the Moreni Hills. As you can see, it's a wonderful mix of, uh, of uh, woods and vineyard, as you can see. It's a wonderful mix. It's a, a very interesting biodiversity. You can see a lot of woods and uh, down you have... Uh, uh, in the south, uh, you have the, the flat area of Veneto, but in the, in the last part, uh, you can see also uh, under this big mountain in front of you, you have another mountain in the, in the, in the landscape that is uh, Euganian Hills, where I have another winery with Elisa that is Maeli Winery from a volcanic soil. Another yeah. interesting story. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned river. Yes. Uh, this all makes two river. Right now, we have only one in the market, uh, the Rive di Guia, the, which yes. was dedicated to your uh, uncle. father, right? Aurelio. Uncle, uncle. Uh, uncle, sorry. Yeah. Uncle, yes. Aurelio, Aurelio. and the nickname so, was Aurelio. So the, the concept of Rive, can you further explain a little bit more like what that means? Rive is uh, inside the historical area of, uh, of the Prosecco Superiore is uh, a particular selection of the 43 best uh, micro area inside the historical Prosecco Superiore area. And uh, uh, this uh, uh, represents a selection, like uh, is around 10% uh, of the total extension of the Prosecco Superiore. And uh, in this area, in this small crew, super crew, you have a particular expression of, of the, the soil that was recognized uh, since uh, uh, the history from the consortium. And uh, so we, we own uh, all our vineyard in a similar position uh, in, uh, in um, river areas, but uh, we decided to use a river, river only for uh, three kind of our Prosecco. The, the original river that is without the name river, but is the original inspiration for the river classification is Cartizze. The other one is Reglio, that is Rive di Guia, that is exactly in front of you, in front of me. And you can see is the 
are the hills of uh, morenic soil. And uh, the no another one is the river di Campea, that is uh, the Marna soil that I mentioned before. So, uh, river represents an opportunity of classification, like uh, the Grand Cru in Champagne, to, uh, to have uh, to go more proof in the knowledge of, of Prosecco Superiore. True. Yeah, to, to even have a more diving approach to the terroir, to understand the terroir, to taste the different expression of the terroir. Exactly, exactly. And the, and the relio that you have in your catalog, a small quantity because the production is very small, is uh, particular because it is uh, a morenic soil that is very rare in this area. And the morenic soil give a more masculine taste to the wine. So there's the Prosecco Superiore from this kind of soil is more masculine, more uh, charismatic, more par particular in, in character, a totally different from the other uh, kind of soil. This morenic soil is the last uh, soil that was created from the geologic uh, um, evolution six million years ago, because Cartizze, for example, is 35 million ago. Uh, so is more recently, but this kind of soil that is rich of a small round uh, stone uh, give uh, the wine uh, uh, the same grape uh, and other character. And uh, you can use uh, with uh, like an aperitif because it's uh, uh, around uh, 12 uh, gram of sugar residual. So you can use uh, like aperitif, but also during the day, it's beautiful to drink uh, outside the lunch, outside the dinner, uh, with friends, uh, like a uh, uh, toast, like a uh, uh, drink uh, in the afternoon, uh, like we use. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you have five different bottlings from Bizol. One important thing uh, to mention is the fact they're all vintage data, which are very uh, unique, again, yes. for sparkling wine in general, even more for Prosecco. Exactly, because normally the Prosecco is made uh, during the year in different uh, uh, second fermentation. So you have all the wine, all the wine that is produced from the, the last harvest, for example, that is ready uh, in January, the wine, the basic wine. And after you start the second fermentation. And so you distribute the, the second fermentation in small parcel during the year since... Uh, January to the end of December. And so you have different uh, bottling. So many producers to avoid uh, to, um, to have, uh, to declare the, the new vintage uh, too early, they prefer to don't put the, the harvest. We, uh, we want to put the harvest because the, the harvest is the, the, a very important uh, information for, the, for our wine lover. And so in uh, our Proseccos, you can find the harvest. And this, the, uh, we, we, we are, since the beginning, you put the harvest in the, in the vine and we have uh, the, totally the harvest that is right in the, in the bottle. And uh, this also is interesting to, to, uh, for appreciate the evolution of the Prosecco because when the Prosecco is uh, made like uh, we do in, uh, in small vineyard in the hills, in very steep hills, uh, with a particular uh, attention to the groaning of the vines and the small production per hectare, you can also appreciate the evolution of the Prosecco Superiore in the years. I love uh, sometimes open uh, a bottle of, of uh, years ago to, to, uh, to see the evolution and this is inter interesting, very interesting. Uh, last year, for example, I remember with Tom Stevenson, you know, that is the guru of champagne. Mm -hmm. that, uh, yep come here and uh, I open a cartizia of uh, 1977. Wow. So it was, uh, was more than 40 years old and it was incredible. Wow. Incredible. Wow, that's, I would definitely be interested in, in tasting that. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yes. Cool. Uh, we have a couple of questions um, before I forget. So first one is, what is the elevation you are at right now? What is the elevation? Uh, here we have uh, 300 video. meters of altitude in Cartizze Hill. It's 310 meters of altitude. Okay. Okay, so it's about 1,000 feet, all right? 
Exactly. And, and which wine has the longest consecutive vintage? They're asking. Uh, you mean the longest consecutive vintage? You, you mean, uh, can you re repeat, uh, explain me the yeah. better? I guess they believe, they, they ask like, what is the wine that has the, you made more vintages of? Of the ah, okay. Crede, for sure is Crede. Crede. Okay. Crede. Yeah. And Crede is the kind of the number one per second in terms of, let's say, production uh, of, the, of all. Do you have a little bit more because the clay sauce is the one a little bit more present in the state? Yes. Uh, and then Cartista, you make a small, a small amount because there's not much land to exactly. farm. And the, the Rive, you said, is even smaller because it's uh, yes. small. Is much more exactly. More Rive is similar to the production of Cartizza in terms of quantity, and Crede is uh, around uh, six times the Cartizza because uh, Crede is this uh, clay soil, and we have in more, more than one of our vineyard. And uh, Crede is also fantastic, like a parity, because uh, the, the acidity of uh, this kind of soil, but also the, the richness in the body that give uh, the wine extract uh, a lot of uh, flavor of flower, not only fruit, that is the normal taste of um, flavor of a, a Prosecco, but also a lot of flower. And this uh, give an elegance that uh, have no, no paragon in, in other, in other uh, Prosecco. And the people love this one uh, since, uh, since, since we start. They, yeah. start, they yeah. continue to buy, yeah. So somebody's asking how many owners are in Cartista. We already uh, replied to the question. Is 140, right? Is that under the 40 families, and you, you know, you have to know that the, the first 10 families, like us, we are in the first 10 families of uh, owner of land. Uh, the 10, the 10 biggest family own 40 percent of the hill. So the other 60 uh, percent of the hills is the hill that is only one hill, is uh, uh, owned by uh, 130 family. So very small, small parcel. Oh, yeah. Everything by hand, as you can see. But, but, but do you know how many families or actually bottlers are of Cartista? There may, may, must be very few, right? Very few. It's around 15 yeah. family. That the, other, the other one, the other 125, sell the grape to the cooperative. Yeah. And the cooperative sell the grape, uh, the, the, the wine uh, to the wineries that uh, are specialized in uh, bottling. We, as we tell before, we are one of the few wineries uh, that uh, start from the grape uh, with our own vineyard and uh, end with the bottle. So we take care of all the work from the vineyard to the, to the bottle. And this allow us uh, to, to give... Uh, the best quality and also to have a lot of, of research in, in the in the vineyard. Otherwise, a lot of family that sell the grape or to the cooperative, they didn't care like us to the, the vineyard. So it's totally different view when you have to, to produce a bottle or when you have to sell the grape to a cooperative. No? Yeah, no, for sure. Now, let's talk a little bit more about the J.O. line. You mentioned it earlier. So it's a line that you started to commemorate your grandfather in the late 90s, correct? Yes, yes, exactly. And my my grandfather was uh, the man, uh, this was a 19th generation, 19th generation, and he lives uh, during the most difficult history of the, the terroir because he lives during the, the, the war. So he had uh, to stop the production, to go the war and to come back. And... Uh, he was the man that decided uh, to separate the Prosecco from the five different kinds of soil. He was a visionary. So we decided in, in 1999, when it was uh, 100 years from the born of my grandfather, Jayo, to dedicate to him a special Prosecco Superiore, that is Jayo, that is uh, with the three kinds of soil that he preferred. So sand soil, morenic soil, and, uh, uh, and clay soil. Okay. And it's all the cuvées, it's all uh, non-vintage? Uh... No, non-vintage in this case, because we use uh, differently here by here, the last vintage or the before vintage, 
in one of the three kind of soil, it depends, every year. And so this is a, a very beautiful uh, and uh, complete uh, uh, range of flavor of the Prosecco Superiore, thanks to the, to the, the three kinds of soil. Yeah. And we remind our followers that we're talking about this specific wine, the Gio Prosecco Superiore, which we launched as Wilson Daniel just, uh, uh, I believe, last year, like a year and a half ago, to the market. Because before, as Gio, there was only the DOC that you make uh, of, uh, of Prosecco, which I don't know why, but is the best DOC Prosecco. How can it be so good? Well, because uh, we... Uh, we use uh, only Prosecco DOC from a very tiny and lucky place uh, near the hills, uh, not in the flat area. So this uh, is inspired like uh, the, the, our Prosecco Superiore because we use only from uh, the hills. You know that uh, in the area of Prosecco uh, Valdobbiadene Superiore and Conegliano, there are uh, 15 uh, cities, 15 towns included. And... Uh, there are other nine towns that are in the hills that wasn't in, in, included in this uh, selection uh, of uh, 1969. Why not? Because it was more than enough in 1969, the, the 15 towns for the production, for the request of the market. So they didn't uh, include also the other nine towns that are always in the hills. So... Uh, we use the grape of this area, uh, and so our Prosecco DOC is uh, very good for this reason, because they thank, bring the, 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 the characteristic of the Prosecco Superiore soils. Well, you, you can taste definitely that in the glass, so... I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. For sure, the Prosecco Superiore is always the best, because uh, we, also in the Prosecco Superiore, the, there are... Uh, different uh, part uh, of the terroir Prosecco Superiore from Valdobbiadene to Conegliano. In Valdobbiadene, you have the very steep, very highest and steep hills. In Conegliano, is more sweet. So the different of quality is, is also inside the Prosecco Superiore. And we own the, the vineyard of Prosecco Superiore only in the best hills near Valdobbiadene. So in the areas in which the soil and the excursion of, soprattutto the excursion of temperature uh, are more more interesting and give uh, a lot of uh, expression in the flavor. Sure. Um, now I want to ask you uh, a question about, let's say, pairings, because, you know, Prosecco has become such a, a category that you find in any kind of restaurants. And we are in the States. Uh, we have any kind of cuisines from around the world. So yeah. where, where do you see, where, which kind of cuisine do you think is the, are some of the best pair you can think of that go with uh, Prosecco Superiore? Ah, for, for, for the Prosecco Superiore, you have a lot of opportunity to pair in the food because uh, you can uh, start with uh, Japanese cuisine, sushi, uh, sashimi, but also the other kind of Japanese cuisine. In this case, I suggest cartizze. And uh, you can go also with the other Asian uh, cuisine like Vietnamese, Thai, also, a lot of uh, food uh, characteristic of the fusion cuisine, like fish, uh, pasta, um, appetizer, fried appetizer. Uh, uh, you have a lot uh, of uh, opportunity to match, uh, thanks to the also, uh, not only from, from the flavor, but also of the acidity, the very elegant acidity that have the Prosecco Superiore. So, the the range of food that, that you can match is very, very, very high, very low, big. What, what are the favorite cheeses to enjoy with this Prosecco? They're asking. The, the favorite? The favorite cheeses. Cheeses? Ah, okay. Order. Yes. Ah, I love with uh, uh, Parmigiano Reggiano, Grana Padano. It's incredible how we match perfectly. All the, the, the cheese that is uh, not fresh, but uh, have a, a, a six uh, to 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 one hundred mount uh, is perfect, and, uh, and for sure, you know that we are in the middle of uh, the Padano area, so we have the Grana Padano that is uh, incredible. We have also some old kind of uh, co 
that produce very small quantity of uh, milk in which the, the flavor of the, 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 the cheese is incredible. This kind is called uh, burlina, they call it. Mm. Well, next time yes. I come over, I got to taste that. Yes, yes, we have to. We have to. Yeah. It's amazing. There are very few, but it's amazing. Yeah, but in general, in general, you can pair Prosecco Superiore also with uh, avocado and rims, for example. It's incredible how it matches very well. Oyster, you can also use oyster with the crede, for example. Yeah. Um, so they're asking if there, you buy grapes for Jayo. Uh, the answer is for only a few, some part, right? Exactly. The, when is Bisol? Uh, so the, the five kind of soil yeah, is 100 percent our grape true, and yeah. for for the j we buy a little bit but the major part is our grape but yeah, we buy yeah. from uh, our uh our, our the people that have a vineyard near our vineyard so the family in which we have uh, uh, the vision of what they do every year every part of the year so we can also take care and I guess also is a long-standing relationship you had for a long time. So. Exactly, exactly. We have a, a long tradition and long, beautiful uh, relationship with uh, the other wine growers, our friends. Great. So, any other questions from uh, our followers? Well, while we wait, um, is there anything else, Gianluca, that you want to add? The uh, uh, I, I tell that uh, uh, I hope to see you here in the, in, uh, in the vineyard, in the region. Uh, we, if you come here, everybody come here, we can organize a wonderful exp experience around our, our uh, estates because, uh, as I tell before, we have uh, uh, not only the vineyard in Valdobbiadene, but also in Euganian Hills, in the volcanic area, uh, where is Maeli Winery with Elisa and other winery is uh, in uh, the, the, the island of Venice, uh, in which we have the only one actor in the world of this old vine. And another vineyard is the highest vineyard that we that are in the world, that, that in, in Europe, sorry, uh, that is in Cortina d'Ampezzo at uh, 1,380 meters of uh, altitude. So in the same region, uh, one hour from uh, an estate to the other estate, we have four places uh, to organize an incredible, uh, wonderful wine experience in this region, from Venice to Valdobbiadene to Cortina to Eugania Nil. So it's exciting. And we have rooms every, every, in every part uh, of these uh, estates. Great. I still, I still have to come to the one in Cortina, but I'm looking forward to, to do that. Yes, so. it's just uh, one week that there's no go away. Uh, but uh, until one week ago, there was a lot of, uh, of snow over the vineyard because you can imagine some time arrive at five meters of, of, uh, of snow over the, the vines. Yeah, no. Okay. Amazing, amazing. Well, I guess we can wrap up our uh, live stream now. Uh, thank you so much, Gianluca, for your time. It's a pleasure. Uh, it's, it's, it's another fantastic conversation. It was very extremely educational. So thank, thank you, you so much. Thank um, you. I look forward to see you again, having an aperitivo together and a toast. Yes. The glass of cartice on at that table you were sitting at just a for moment sure. ago. For sure, for sure. Uh, I can't wait. And I also look looking forward to to see you back here. Uh, yes. Time, no, better times are gonna come very soon. So for sure, arrive. For sure, arrive. We we are now going better and better, and also you know uh, will be the same in few weeks in few days in few weeks uh, we will we, we'll, uh, have a glass together of cartice eh? yes i can't wait i can't wait um and thank you so much to our followers that thank came you. to uh, uh follow this conversation today on uh, on the on, on instagram live and uh, make sure to follow Gianluca on instagram yes Gianluca bisol is a very uh, active on social and not uh, uh, so much but uh, i can do better for sure <laughs> no you you're, you're definitely you're definitely very active than the average let's say a uh, vendor so uh, and <laughs> I, prefer, sure I, follow... I prefer the manual work than the digital work but <laughs> i do also yes. the digital work but uh, i wish you a wonderful lunch uh, and taking a prosecco before the lunch 
I suggest you, a crede that is uh, with a good acidity, open a bottle of crede and uh, have a good lunch. And uh, thank you for your support, every, everybody that uh, love the quality of Prosecco. You know that also in the Prosecco, there are big difference from uh, the different Prosecco. So thanks for the attention to my Prosecco Superiore, the work that we do by hand every day in our vineyard. And thanks also to the big, wonderful team of Wilson Daniels that have uh, an incredible effect in, in, the, in the market to, to, up, to, to help to know to the customer the best uh, expression of the best ca categories of wine. So thank you very much of all the uh, Wilson Daniels team. Thank you to Rocco Lombardo that is a, an incredible man that is uh, uh, at the top of this organization. Thank you to... Alessandro and everybody that I know in the group. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. I love you. No, oh, we love you too as well. We are a big, uh, great family together. We're doing great work together. Yes. Um, I want to say also, make sure to follow uh, Bisol Prosecco at Bisol Prosecco, the Instagram live. And if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out directly to Zaluca, to the winery, or to us at Wilson Daniels. Yes. Yes. And follow uh, also also Venice uh, website yep. that is uh, the place in Venice and yep. Maeli that you, you is M A E L I wine uh, Maeli wine yeah. Maeli wine exactly yeah. and Venice which Venice Tenuta which are the two projects that uh, Gianluca uh, uh, is a, is a shareholder on uh, bo on both in uh, in this in Veneto one in Colle exactly. Maeli and one in the Laguna Venice, Venice. In, in Cortina, is not the, there is not the website at the moment because uh, we, it's not in the market yet, the wine, but will be soon in 2022, the wine in the market. Uh, very, very few bottles, only 800 bottles per year. Yeah, great. And both Venice and Maeli are actually carried by Wilson Daniels in the States. So exactly. You can check that out. Um, one last thing to our followers. This Thursday at 12... Uh, PM Eastern Time. We're gonna have you Davis of Schranzburg uh, live doing a live from uh, from uh, the state. So make sure to tune in. It's a week of uh, the great sparkling wines from around the world. So first Prosecco and then uh, with Schranzburg. Um, again, thank you very much to everybody. Happy Passover or Happy Easter. Be safe yes. and drink Bizarre. Yes. Big, big, big uh, uh, hug to everybody and the happy Easter. And wow. I, will, I will be with you with uh, the Zrenberg uh, testing event next uh, Yeah, yeah, follow it. It's going to be you on, uh, on his own doing uh, a great presentation of... Uh, they they, they are 